These old timers, they really were what Cosa Nostra was all about. No question. When I watched this scene, I got the chills. This scene was so accurate as to the way the old timers would handle something like this. It was just brilliant. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is good on this end. Praise God for that. And uh, I want to thank you all, all you subscribers. Thank you. Keep them coming. We're building, we're building all the content we're putting in there. Everybody seems to be enjoying it. And uh, we just keep building every week. So thank you all for that. MichaelFrancis.com, the inner circle. Got to get involved. We're growing in leaps and bounds and everybody is loving what they're seeing in that community. Trust me, especially coming out of a pandemic, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in Ukraine, people need one another and we're providing so much content. People are loving it. Today, we're going to do something a little different. You know, we're sitting down here and I call this a sit down with Michael Francis. And basically we're sitting down and I'm talking to you or I have a guest on and we, you know, we do an interview and then we're sitting down, but it's not a real sit down. The sit down was really part, an essential part of Cosa Nostra, part of the mafia. Everything we did, everything we decided was decided in a sit down. Sometimes very serious. Could have been a matter of life and death. Sometimes a very serious business deal. Other times, hey, let's sit down. Where are we going to dinner tonight? I mean, it could have been something as easy as that. But, you know, it was during these sit downs that I really honed my skills in negotiating, in reading people, in really understanding business. Because in many ways, the mob is a business and uh, very essential. Now, there were sit downs where I called for them because I had something that I needed to get done and I called for the sit down, maybe a dispute I had with another person, maybe somebody's life that was in jeopardy that I had to straighten out. And there were times when I was called into a sit down and I had to defend myself and defend a position. They were all very, very serious. But again, the knowledge, the skills that I acquired during these sit downs, you don't learn that anywhere else. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you all a very exciting exciting once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm telling you this, you're not going to learn this anywhere else. Don't leave this video. You got to go right to the end. We're going to talk about something first. I'm going to give you an example and then we're going to go right to the end. You're going to get a chance to test your skills in a real sit down. Really? Okay, never before done. Everybody knows that, I think you do at this point, that I love the film Gotti. The 1995, I think 96, HBO film Gotti with Armand DeSante. I've talked about it dozens of times. One of the greatest mob movies ever made. Why? Number one, it was realistic. Number two, it was acted impeccably. Armand DeSante was brilliant as Gotti. Anthony Quinn was brilliant as Neil Delacroce. And everybody, all the surrounding actors were just terrific. And the story was tight and pretty realistic because they went off of tapes and off of actual uh, documentation. And it was a pretty accurate story depiction of that part of Gotti's life. And there was a couple of scenes in there that just stand out. One of them I want to set up for you because it set up a real sit down. And it was amazing. You know, John Gotti was asked to do a hit by the boss, Carlo Gambino at the time. And Paul Castellano, who was the underboss at that time, asked to have one of his men, one of his made men, accompany John Gotti on this hit. John didn't like that. He told Neil Delacroix, Anthony Quinn later, what do I need this guy for? I don't know him. Anthony Quinn said, hey, you bring him. If you were told to bring him, you bring him. You follow the orders. That's O'Neill. Follow the orders, okay? So, they set up a plan to go hit this guy for Carlo Gambino. It was all set up. Gotti set it up. Castellano's guy was there. Made guy was in the car and they had it all set up. Well, as it turns out, without getting into all the details, Castellano's made guy decided to go half cocked on his own and do something that jeopardized everybody. And Gotti was mad and rightfully so. He had a right to be mad about this. So what does he do? Because this guy jeopardized everybody, what does he do? Gotti puts a hit out on him. And he goes and has somebody kill Castellano's made guy. Now I'm gonna tell you this, you don't ever, ever murder a made guy without permission. You just don't do it. Gotti was brass in the movie and he did it. So now 
This is a problem. You die for that. So now what happens? The made guy gets killed. They know Gotti's responsible. And Castellano calls for a sit down. He wants Gotti killed. So who's going to be in that sit down? Well, naturally, this is higher up. Carlo Gambino, the boss, he's there. Neil Della Croce, he's called in because we know, okay, that he is, he loves John Gotti and he's going to fight for him. And of course, the consigliere is there because the boss looks at him. He wants to know what his opinion is on all of this. Now, this is very serious. This is life or death. The decision that the boss makes at this point in time is gold. That's it. If Gotti's going to die, he's going to die. And if he's going to live, he's going to live. And that's totally the boss's call in this. So you got the consigliere, you got the boss, you got the guy making the complaint, Paul Castellano, and you got the guy fighting for the guy's life. And that's uh, Neil. So that's the setup. And this scene was unbelievable. Everybody acted so tremendously in this scene. It was so realistic. So now I want you to watch the scene. Watch how each person conducts himself, what they're fighting for, what they're saying, how the boss is paying attention, how he's letting everybody talk. Important. And how he tells them, be respectful. There was one point there where Paul Castellano says the F word and Carlo Gambino says it's not necessary to talk like that. And you know what? It's pretty true. Made guys, when we were at a sit down, we had to be respectful. We couldn't disrespect one another. You do that, you almost automatically lose. And it was a great rule that was set down and people abided by it because we had to. We had no choice. So watch this and watch everybody. Watch their, their facial expressions. Watch what they're saying. Watch their emotions. And, uh, and we'll go through it, and then I'll give you some key points here. The bottom line, the bottom line is John Gotti clipped a soldier, my Duchene, without my okay. That's a flagrant violation. John Gotti should die. No need to curse, Paul. No need. Neil, Neil. Uh, no, you know me, don't Carlo. I'm my street guy. If I, if I can't curse, I... I can't talk. You should have known this hit. Who endangered the life of a young man I think of as, as, as a son. Caglione deserved to be clipped. A young guy was doing a, a piece of work that could buy him 25 years. That's and... immaterial. The bottom line is that we... Bottom line, yes, bottom line. That's weasel words. My God, a businessman talks like that. What the hell kind of word is that? <laughs> Paul, you don't know the streets. I mean, you, you never have. John Gotti clipped your soldier because your soldier deserved it. John Gotti is Cosa Nostra. Consigliere. The rule was broken, yes. It calls for Gotti to die. Was the reason for breaking the rule so powerful that it was justified? We need all the John Gottis we can get, but we survive by our rules. If it was my call, he would go. Now, if you notice, Paul Castellano, I want John Gotti clipped. He wants him killed, he wants him dead. You don't kill a made guy in somebody else's crew, especially without permission. And he was right in that regard. You don't do that. But Neil De La Croce, John Gotti was like a son to him. And he was fighting for Gotti's life. And Carlo Gambino is going to make the final decision. That's it. It's on him. He's the boss. His word is gold. You don't argue with it. That's it. But meanwhile, there's a fight. And Castellano had the reputation of being more of a business guy. He wasn't really a street guy. And that's one of the things, that was one of the big complaints about him. It was all about business. It wasn't about street. He wasn't really qualified. He just got there because he was Carlo Gambino's relative and all that. And there was a lot of talk about Paul. And you know what? I had to sit down with Paul at one point. I wasn't particularly fond of him. Uh, you know, he wasn't the guy that I would want to hang out with. Let's leave it at that. But he was a boss. I was respectful. I was only a recruit at the time, so I would never say anything that would be disrespectful regardless. So Neil De La Croce is fighting for John Gotti's life. And his words are brilliant. And when Castellano comes back and says, I think he says, it's immaterial. It was funny because Neil De La Croce says, immaterial? What kind of word is that? We're not in a business situation here. We're on the street. You were never a street guy. What does that mean? He says, and at one time he says, you know what? John Gotti clipped 
your something, I'm not going to use that profanity, guy because he deserved it. He jeopardized everybody. So he really went to bat. Neil really went to bat for John at that time. And then Carlo Gambino, who's listening, he sits back and he asks his consigliere. He says, what would you do? And the consigliere was smart. He said, look, he said, John Gotti may have been right as far as this guy jeopardizing everything. He said, we need, we need a ton of John Gotti's in our crew. He said, however, you don't clip a made guy. We have to live by our rules. And if it was my call, John Gotti would go. He voted for his death. We didn't know what happened. But Carlo Gambino, he thinks about it. As it turns out, Neil had a lot of respect. He fought hard. He said, look, John Gotti's like a son to me. And Carlo Gambino, out of respect for Neil Delacroce, he lets Gotti live. But it's a brilliant scene. And you know what? Neil had to fight hard because he was a loser going in. He was a loser going into this argument because a steadfast rule, you don't ever clip a made guy. And let me tell you something about that life. You know, everybody talks about, you know, this guy saying, oh, I killed this guy, killed that guy, killed this guy, did all that. Not so. Not so. You know, it wasn't rampant murders. There were one or two or three guys that had a reputation. You know their names out there. We're not going to go through it. But murder was very serious in that life. And we were told only the boss can order a hit. That's it. It was something that was discussed, like you saw in this sit-down, and something that was given a lot of attention to, and you had a, a, an opportunity to fight for somebody's life or fight against it, and the boss made the final decision, and his word was gold. That was it. So it was a brilliant scene. And uh, I hope you, you watched it and really learned the way they argued their points and, you know, how passionate Anthony Quinn was in this argument. And the consigliere, too. I mean, he, he was brilliant. He said it right. He said, hey, we need a ton of John Gotti's because he's a real deal. But he broke the rules. You don't break the rules in this life. And if it was my decision, he would go. He voted for his death. But again, Neil fought brilliantly. Carlo Gambino had a heart, had a lot of respect for Neil. He was a higher up guy, a guy of, of a lot of respect on the street. I remember that. And so he let Gotti live. So that sit down is over. Carlo Gambino rendered his decision on that. The next scene we see is Neil Delacroix and John Gotti in his club. And uh, we see the result of that sit down. This is a brilliant scene. I'm, I'm telling you, this is one of the most brilliant scenes in any mob movie ever. Anthony Quinn just killed it. He was terrific. And of course, Armand DeSante was great. But this was Anthony Quinn's steen. He stole it. And let me tell you something. These old timers, they really were what Cosa Nostra was all about. No question. When I watched this scene, I got the chills. This scene was so accurate as to the way the old timers would handle something like this. It was just brilliant. So Neil comes into the bar. He wants to see Gotti. And Gotti walks up there. And I remember he says, you know, what do you want to see? Something like that. Niels tells Gotti, I was fighting all night for your life. And Gotti starts to get arrogant. What do you mean? I can't. And he says to him, shut up. You don't tell a made guy to shut up that fast. But Neil, you know, he was, he was, <laughs> he was the real deal. We sit Gotti down. And the dialogue coming out of him at that point was just brilliant. It was just brilliant. And he tells him straight out. He said, you know, I fought for your life. Castellano wanted you killed. He said, but the old man, he, he, he understood that you were like a son to me, and he gave you a pass. He gave you a pass. He said, but I want to tell you something. If the old man had said that you got to go, I would have came here with these two zips, and today you would go because we live by our rules. And, you know, that's what Cousin Nostra was all about, people, the rules. That was what Omerta was all about never even admitting to the fact that that life existed. And the old timers, many of them, they lived by those rules. And that's why Cosa Nostra was different. One of the reasons why it was different back then than it was maybe more after my day, during my day, you know, it was just different. Now, there are a lot of other factors in that, which I'm not going to get into. The laws changed and they were a lot different and a lot of more people became informants. It was a whole different system and a whole different you know, situation, you know, way back when than it was during my time and time to follow that. But uh, this was a brilliant scene. And when he said it, you live by the rules. If we don't live by the rules, this whole damn thing falls apart. And you know what? He was prophetic in that regard because a lot of guys did not live by the rules and a lot of things fell apart. That was the bottom line.
but the scene was brilliant. Now, this wasn't really a sit-down. This was the aftermath of the sit-down. This was Delacroix De coming in and telling Gotti, you don't do this ever again. You don't ever kill a made guy in another guy's crew. You don't kill a made guy, period, unless you get an order from the boss. He told him straight out. But the scene was chilling, at least it was for me. It hit home. I understood how serious it was and uh, how serious these sit-downs are and what the outcome can possibly be. I'm going to give you an opportunity now that you're not going to get anywhere else. I was in so many sit-downs, so many of them do stand out, but I'm going to give one that's obvious, a sit-down that I had with John Gotti. It was over a swap meet, a flea market, a guy that was doing drugs in the market. John and I clashed on it. We had a couple of sit-downs. Finally, uh, a decision was made by the boss, and we carried it out. But I'm going to actually let you get involved in this sit-down in a simulation, and we're going to see how you would decide you know, certain things that happened during that sit-down. What would your answer be? How would you have handled it? What would you have said to John Gotti? Or what would you have not said to John Gotti at the time? Would you even have the sit-down over what happened? You know, a lot of things, I want to test your skills because this was important to me. I had to have a plan going in. Gotti was not an easy guy to get along with in something like this. Socially, great. Business, very, very tough. So I had to have a game plan. And I worked it out prior to my sitting down with him. So we're going to give you an opportunity to see what you would do, test your skills. Click on the link in the description, and it's going to take you to this simulated sit-down. We're going to see what you're going to do. We're going to test your skills. I'm going to grade you. We're going to see if you're right or wrong. And you know what? We're going to do a number of these things, and I guarantee you stay with me on this. You're going to get better. And this is the only opportunity you'll ever have. Hopefully, I don't think you're ever going to be sitting down in a real social club in, in a sit-down. If you are, uh, you're probably going to be in trouble at some point in time. But anyway, click on the link below. You're going to have some fun doing this. We're going to test your skills, and I guarantee you continue, you're going to get better at it. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. We got a whole bunch of these things that we're going to be doing. You know, there were so many brilliant scenes from so many movies that really show the real life Cosa Nostra. We're going to talk about them. And some of them that are just nonsense that I'll probably tell you about that would never even happen. But we enjoyed doing this. The comments have been great. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to do our best to entertain you and inform you at the same time. Because look, these skills that I learned on the street, you're not going to learn anywhere else. So by watching these things, you're going to learn. You're going to get better at negotiating, at leadership, at business. You're going to get better in all the skills that you need to succeed in life. That's about it. So how do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you. We got tough times and we need God's blessing. And yes, I'll see you next time.